All praise is due to Allah. He enlightened the hearts of His obedient servants by guiding them to love Him. He enlightened their insight with the knowledge and wisdom which He granted them. He also astounded their minds with His infinite ability. I praise Allah as He is perfect in every way. I am grateful to Him. I glorify Him and I proclaim His majesty. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. He is the Almighty Sovereign who is perfect in every way. I further bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant, chosen messenger, and Khalil. He was the most knowledgeable of people about his Lord, had the most reverential fear of him, observed taqwa of him most, and had the purest soul. O oh Allah, send continuous salah and salam upon him, his family, his noble companions, and all who continue to follow their path. I counsel you all, as well as myself, to observe taqwa of Allah at all times and in all circumstances. Servants of Allah, you must also realize that taqwa is what brings a person salvation and happiness and it is the foundation of attaining assistance and prominence from Allah. There is nothing else like taqwa by which Allah's mercy and kindness are attained. He said, if only the people of the towns to whom we sent our messengers had iman and observed taqwa, we would have granted them blessings from every direction. However, they belied the messengers, so he took them to account for what they had done. Dear Muslims, happiness is a state which is felt by the heart and soul. It comes about when a person attains something he wants or when a desire of his is satisfied. There are many things in life that can make a person happy and they vary based on people's ideas, convictions and motives. Many people think that true happiness comes from money, status, jobs, cars, homes, and other things of this world. However, the reality is that these produce happiness which is incomplete and also tainted by various factors. Not only that, they could actually be causes of pain, misery, and sorrow in many cases. Allah said, the mercy Allah grants people cannot be withheld by anyone and whatever Allah withholds from people cannot be granted by anyone besides Him. The majority of people are unmindful of the fact that there is a happiness unmatched by anything in this world which they so ardently desire and pursue. There is a type of happiness which is extraordinary and which brings remarkable delight to the heart and soul when it permeates them. It comes from being happy with Allah. Being happy with Allah, the most majestic and exalted. Being happy with our Lord entails being happy with Him Himself, with all that comes from Him, with His Messenger وسلم, with His directives, with the Qur'an, and with the various acts of worship such as prayer, fasting, charity, and all acts of goodness which please Allah. Being happy with all of that is true happiness. It brings delight to the soul. It continues without coming to an end. And anyone who has not tasted its sweetness has not tasted any true blessing. Being happy with Allah brings delight so great that our words cannot do justice in describing it. Allah told His Messenger وسلم, the people who accept the truth among those whom we gave prior scriptures rejoice over what has been sent down to you. Allah also said, Allah also instructed His Messenger, say all people should be glad to have the bounty and mercy of Allah that is better than anything of this world they can amass for themselves. 
The majority of the scholars of tafsir have explained that the bounty referred to here is Islam and the mercy referred to is the Qur'an. In other words, it is as though Allah is saying to us, be happy with Islam and with the Qur'an. That is what should truly make you happy. And it is better than all the things of this world which people can amass for themselves. Being happy with Allah and being happy to enact all of the words and deeds which please Him comprise an incredible act of worship which speakers and reformers often neglect to teach people and remind them about. Consequently, being happy with those things becomes an act of worship which is forgotten although it cures the ailments of our souls, remedies the sorrows of our hearts, strengthens our bodies, and rids us from the ills of boredom and fatigue. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah commented that one of the greatest ranks of Iman is being happy with Allah. A person is a servant of Allah and is supposed to have love for Him. Thus, he is to be happy with Allah as his Lord, provider, and the one whom he worships. Even more than any servant in this world could be happy with his master who is a mere created being just like him. Being happy with Allah consoles people of Iman throughout the struggles of life. And it is one of the most effective means of putting the heart at ease and enabling it to, an, to accept the truth. Being happy with Allah is the greatest delight hearts can feel and the greatest sweetness souls can taste. It is among the foremost things which Allah loves and which raise the rank of those who inculcate it. A servant of Allah needs to be certain that he has a Lord who regulates all things, owns all things, provides for him, is in control of all matters, and is capable of doing everything. When an individual is certain of that, his heart will be at ease and he would find unparalleled happiness with that Lord. Furthermore, the individual's happiness would last when he continues to maintain that certainty in whatever circumstances he finds himself. A person who has Iman finds more happiness with his Lord than any servants could ever find with any of their masters. Allah said, and among mankind are some who take others besides Allah as rivals to him. They love them as they love Allah. However, the people who have Iman love Allah more than anything else. A person who has Iman feels happy when he knows that Allah is with him and that Allah sees him, hears his words, supports him, is his hearing with which he hears, sight with which he sees, and hand with which he grasps. The life of this person who has Iman would certainly be the finest life and he would be the most deserving of people to receive Allah's assistance even if all the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth plotted against him. Someone who has Iman feels happy when he privately calls upon his Lord at the end of the night, reciting his words, contemplating their meanings, and seeking strength, certainty, and assistance from them. Allah said, their sides leave their beds as they call upon their Lord out of fear and hope. Additionally, they give to others from what we have provided for them. A mu'min is happy with Allah granting him blessings, and guiding him to be steadfast in adhering to Allah's religion. Guiding him to be steadfast in adhering to Allah's religion, obeying him, and staying away from disobeying him, especially at times when many people fall victim to doubts and turmoil, treat Allah's obligations lightly, and belittle well-established principles. A mu'min rejoices over the fact that Allah has made him a member of the Ummah of the greatest messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and blessed him to follow that messenger's sunnah and guidance. In contrast to many others who have invented things and claimed that they are part of Allah's religion, when in reality Allah never permitted them and they contradict the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such people have strayed from what is correct in this life, perhaps even thinking that what they do is right. A mu'min feels happy when he is genuinely humble towards others, merciful to them, extends kindness to them, helps them with their needs, feeds the hungry among them, settles their debts, and is able to provide them with assistance when disaster strikes. 
He keeps his heart clean from the impurities of malice, spite, rancor, arrogance, and bigotry. Additionally, a woman who has Iman feels happy about her modesty, chastity, hijab, obedience to her husband, being in her home, and fulfilling the true and continuous responsibility which Allah has blessed her with in this life. The responsibility of educating the coming generation, raising true men, and shaping role models who deserve to be emulated. The aforementioned aspects of happiness, along with many others, all come from being happy with Allah and with all that pleases Him. Thus, when a person has Iman, he experiences indescribable happiness throughout his life. It is happiness which does not come to an end, and delight which cannot be found by anyone who strays from the path of remaining happy with Allah. If someone searches for it elsewhere, he is merely chasing a mirage, which he thinks is water or an oasis, but is nothing more than an arid desert. And if Allah does not give light to someone, that person cannot have any light. Servants of Allah, being happy with Allah is one of the highest ranks of Iman and greatest channels to worshiping Allah in the best way. This is because in reality, it is the product of many magnificent components of Iman, including love for Allah, being pleased with Allah, certainty, perseverance, and expecting the best from Allah. No honor can be conferred upon a person greater than him being, greater than him being someone whose heart is full of happiness, with his originator and guardian Lord. That is what brings true comfort and solace to our hearts and souls. When a person fosters that within himself, Allah will set all matters right for him, place contentment in his heart, and put the things of this world at his disposal. Consider the following statement of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. He made a remark similar to the words of revelation that were conveyed by prophets. He said, He said, It is weakness in your certainty for you to appease people when that involves displeasing Allah, to praise people for provision which comes to you from Allah, and to blame people for what you were not granted by Allah. No matter how hard anyone may try, he cannot give you anything more than the provision which Allah has decreed for you to have. And no matter how much he may despise you, he cannot withhold any of Allah's provision from you. Indeed, Allah, out of his complete justice, made happiness and joy come with being pleased with and certain about him. And made sadness and grief come with doubting and displeasing him. This was collected by Bayhaqi and Shu'ab al-Iman. May Allah bless us all by the glorious Qur'an and allow us to glean benefit from the ayah and wisdom it contains. I say this much, and I implore Allah the Most Magnificent to forgive me, you, and all Muslims for every misdeed. Thus ask His forgiveness, as He is certainly the Most Forgiving, the Bestower of Mercy. Allah deserves praise as abundant as the number of His creatures, as great as the weight of His throne, as endless as His inexhaustible words, and as much as pleases Him. O oh Allah, send salah and salam upon our Prophet Muhammad, as well as upon his family, companions, and followers. Being happy with Allah is a blessing that comes from Him. It is only the sincere and obedient servants of Allah who are guided to inculcate it within themselves. It is only the sincere and obedient servants of Allah who are guided to inculcate it within themselves. They are the ones who live each day and night with their Lord who is perfect in every way and they constantly keep in mind that He is near and with them. When a person lives his life with Allah, no life could be better than his. Nonetheless, there are many people who are deprived of that life but they do not even sense that Allah has forsaken them. 
Rather, they rejoice over the life of this world. They rejoice over the life of this world. However, that is like the joy an infant might feel with a toy. Not the happiness which an adult feels when matters of importance are achieved. The aforementioned people are happy due to their money, positions, and status. However, it is not happiness that leads them to offer gratitude and praise to Allah. On the contrary, it leads them to be proud, arrogant, and conceited. They remain in that state and cannot find their way out of it. They are like Qarun, who overstepped Allah's bounds and became arrogant. He was not hindered even though he was reminded that Allah does not love arrogant ingrates. Additionally, the aforementioned people rejoice over the sins they commit, whether by word or action, and they love to be praised for things which they did not do themselves. They combine doing wrong things, saying wrong things, being happy with those things, and loving praise for good things which they did not do themselves. Do not ever presume such people to be far from Allah's punishment. They will certainly face a severe torment. They also feel joy over the misfortunes which befall their Muslim brothers, and they wish for them to lose Allah's favors. They are just like Allah described the Munafiqun. When anything good happens to you, it grieves them. In contrast, when any adversity befalls you, they say, we have already taken our precautions against this, and they turn away from you while feeling happiness. They pride themselves over the knowledge which they think they have, and they live with a sense of arrogance and scorn towards those whom they see beneath themselves. As a collective, they sacrificed their religion and its teachings. They did away with fairness and became divided into various factions, each one happy with only what it does, such as what they rejoice over. But that is happiness which is false. As for the people of Iman, they experience happiness which is completely different from the aforementioned people who are lost amidst the abyss of seeing nothing beyond this world. The happiness of the people who have Iman is one which centers around Allah and all that pleases Him. Those are the sources of their happiness and delight. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu wept out of joy when he knew he would accompany the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in migrating to al Medina. The companions rejoiced more than anything else when they heard the Prophet ﷺ tell a Bedouin, you will be with those whom you love. You will be with those whom you love. Ubay ibn Ka'b was overjoyed when the Prophet ﷺ recited Surah Al-Bayyinah and then told him, Allah indeed instructed me to recite it to you. Ubay asked, He named me to you? The Prophet ﷺ replied, Yes. And Ubay wept out of how happy he was, out of how happy he was that Allah had named him from above the heavens. Furthermore, a person who repents would be overjoyed to know that Allah has accepted his repentance. Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu anhu fell down in prostration to Allah due to being overcome with happiness when he was told that Allah had accepted his repentance. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whose face was beaming with happiness told him, receive glad tidings of the best day of your life since the time your mother bore you. In addition, Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu stated, I have never felt happiness over anything as much as knowing that my heart was not infiltrated by the disobedient inclinations certain people follow. Dear Muslims, what is it that prevents us from being happy with our Lord, whose mercy encompasses all things, who guided us to the channels that please Him, who fulfills our needs, and who gives us shelter, food, and drink? He is immensely kind and merciful to us. Thus, should we not love Him? Should we not be happy with Him since He can grant us goodness in a mere instant? Bear in mind that He is near and has full knowledge of everything 
expect the best from him because he is as his servant expects of him. Seek what is with him so that you would not be in need of what people have. That is true richness and contentment. Occupy yourselves with mentioning and remembering him and reciting his speech. When you do those things, your souls would attain happiness and your days will be filled with joy. Dear Muslims, what is it that prevents us from being happy with Allah's Messenger وسلم, who was the best of all creation and the most noble of all people to Allah? He was sent as mercy and guidance for all of creation. You should endeavor to read his blessed sunnah. Make knowing about his life part of yours. Follow his path because it is sufficient and do not invent things and add them to it because there is no need to do so. Love him as the companions loved him without any excessiveness or negligence. The things which he sallallahu alayhi wasallam disliked most were extremism, excessiveness and praise and inventing things and claiming them to be part of the religion. Dear Muslim Ummah, be happy with Allah's favor and mercy. Islam is a religion of ease and devoting all worship to Allah alone. It is a religion which brings happiness. It does not advocate monasticism, restrictiveness or sorrow. On the contrary, sorrow is mentioned in the Quran as something which people must not dwell on. Thus, you should count Allah's favors to you. Expect the best from Him. Be pleased with what He grants you. Remain hopeful and optimistic and do not lose hope or fall victim to grief. When someone is happy with Allah, that person would not grieve over what passed him by, despair about the present or be upset with any circumstances. When someone is happy with Allah, that person would not panic due to adversity, surrender to anybody, give up just because of the first difficulty he faces or be shaken by events around him. That individual remains with his Lord throughout each day and night. His Lord assists him, supports him, and guides him. Allah allows that individual to find contentment and solace with him. Allah provides that person with nourishment that would make him forget every difficulty and sorrow. Which is precisely what was mentioned by the Prophet wasallam when he said that he spent the night being given food and drink by his Lord. Thus, he reached the morning having the most happiness, certainty, and acceptance of the truth out of all people. Allah said, hearts most certainly find tranquility by dhikr of Allah. Allah further said, as for the people who strive for us, we shall certainly guide them to our paths. And Allah is surely with those who strive to worship him in the best way. Servants of Allah in conclusion invoke salah and salam upon our Prophet. Allah instructed us to do so by saying, indeed Allah and his angels sent salah upon the Prophet. People of Iman invoke salah upon him and invoke salam upon him as well. It was also authentically reported that the Prophet وسلم, said, if anyone invokes salah upon me once, Allah would send salah upon that person ten times as a result. O oh Allah, send salah, salam, and blessings upon our beloved Prophet and role model Muhammad. O oh Allah, be pleased with his companions, his wives, and all of his companions, especially Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali. O oh Allah, be pleased with all of his companions and all who follow their path. O oh Allah, grant strength to Islam and Muslims. O oh Allah, grant victory to your book, the Sunnah of your Prophet and your righteous servants. O oh Allah, grant victory to your servants who direct all of their worship to you alone. O oh Allah, come to the assistance of our downtrodden brothers in all places. O oh Allah, assist them in Palestine, Beit al maqdis and the surrounding area. O oh Allah, come to their assistance in the region of Sham, in Iraq, in Yemen, and in all other places, O oh Allah, we call upon you to support our brothers who are engaged in jihad, struggling in your path as they defend the borders of our nation. O oh Allah, grant them strength 
and assistance which come from you. O oh Allah, God, our leader, to do all that you love and are pleased with. O oh Allah, God, his deputy, to all that would be best for people and their lands. O oh Allah, forgive us. O oh Allah, forgive us and have mercy upon us. O oh Allah, forgive us, our parents, the people of Islam and the people of Iman, whether alive or deceased. O oh Allah, you are the one who has complete knowledge of all things. We ask you to keep us alive so long as you know that life will be good for us and to take us back to you when you know that that will be best for us. O oh Allah, we ask you to make us steadfast in following the truth and we ask you to bestow upon us your bounty which never comes to an end. O oh Allah, we beg you to give us the blessing of allowing us to see you in the hereafter. O oh Allah, bless us with Iman and make us rightly guided and sources of guidance for others. May Allah send salah and salam upon our Prophet and upon all his family and companions.